100 in the front part of your hymnal, Psalm 100. We speak 100 responsively, half verse by half verse. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And His faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
may be seated for our readings. <clears throat> our Old Testament lesson for today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you. And you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thank you. <clears throat> Our epistle lesson is taken from Second Timothy, verses, uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. You, however, having followed my teaching my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from who you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked while the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold the forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. O Lord, have mercy on us. <clears throat> Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the hands. <clears throat> of your house and the place where your glory dwells. 
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. You may be seated. We now have our children come forward for an Advent, uh, for a Commitment Celebration Day uh, celebration. Deb, are you going to tell them what the stars are? Okay. The children just put their star banks on the trees. Um, since the 60th anniversary celebration, um, the Sunday school lesson that day was God promised to Abraham that he would make his descendants as numerous as the stars, and that through those descendants, all the world would be blessed. And so we've been sharing our gifts. Now sing our hymn number 698.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take a deep breath. Take one with me. Ah, feels good. You probably weren't thinking about the fact that you were breathing before I asked you about it. There are, however, times that one becomes very aware of one's breathing. One of the times that I became very aware of breath was when I was helping Laura through our Lamaze classes and then our, through our first baby, Graceland. And, and I will say that our Lamaze work and our Lamaze breathing did not last very long past uh, the epidural. After that, it was all pretty much downhill from there. <laughs> there are times where breathing becomes very obvious or very noticeable to us like when we are giving a presentation, standing in front of people, maybe not able to catch our own breath, or when we are having a uh, speech at school, when we are singing, when we are snorkeling underwater, and so on and so on. Before doing something important, usually we take a deep breath, and then we go forward. Church, take a deep breath. Because together we are about to do something very important. We're going to make a commitment to the future uh, that God has shown us. As we approach that moment during our, our uh, uh, the time that's noted in our liturgy but for our offering today, we're going to ask the Lord to bring new life to us, to breathe into us, so we can become all that he has envisioned. Because there were times when, as disciples, it seems we're as lively as the dead bones we saw today, in the story of Ezekiel. In that story, Ezekiel uh, saw that God was going to breathe into these slain, as it says. God has done that throughout uh, his dealings with humanity. At creation, he breathes into Adam and Eve. He breathes into the disciples on Easter morning, as we saw in our gospel reading. Uh, and, he breathes on, uh, and he gives them uh, the, the breath of life in Pentecost as well. Israel is barely alive because they had not taken a deep breath of what God had to offer for a long time. And they were dried up. They were cut off. What did God want them to breathe in? Well, his word. In our reading in from 2 Timothy today, it says, uh, describes the word of God, the scriptures, as being God-breathed. We are, to, we are given the word so that we may be energized to live for him. Just as those dry bones Ezekiel saw were breathed into in order that they would live. <clears throat> when the word first does its work, our hearts are confronted by the law that reveals to us that we are lifeless, that we are dry bones. He wants to renew us by that word into living disciples who go from people who are comfortable with what God has done in their lives to people who yearn to experience the next thing that God wants to do for them. We go from people who resist change, who don't need growth, into people who resolve to never stop growing. We change from those who've desired to be served, to, cater, to be catered to, to have their needs met, into people who are so full of the Holy Spirit that their desire is to serve others. We go from people who believe that they have lived their best days in life into people who know that their best days lie ahead. When something dramatic is about to happen, we tend to hold our breath. When our son or daughter is going to sing that solo in the school play, when your son is pitching that fastball, when your husband is about to fix that pipe under the sink every month when I open up the visa bill. What happens when the word of God goes to work? Ezekiel saw it with his own eyes, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and, bre and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Can you imagine Ezekiel's hair standing on end, he probably holding his breath throughout this whole process as he was prophesying just this amazing thing happened before his eyes. As he prophesied, the word of God did its work. They were gathered together, bone to bone, sinew to sinew. The, death, the dead came back to life. They stood up on their feet like a vast army. In our gospel reading, the disciples on the night of Jesus' resurrection are spiritually exhausted. All hope, all hope for the future, all hope for their lives is gone. They sit in a room, locked behind doors, worrying about what will come next. Life is uncertain. They are emotionally drained and they're full of fear. 
because their Lord had died. They were dry, dried up. Jesus comes to them and his first word is peace to you. The peace he won for them on the cross is now the same peace he invites us to have, to transform us into people of life and purpose. In fact, Jesus breathes into them just as he breathed upon the dead bones in Ezekiel's vision because on the the cross, (coughs) Jesus breathed his last. Now he breathes into us and his first word is peace. He fills us with forgiveness and life and a desire to be reaching out for what he has. When we inhale, we receive the Holy Spirit, the gift from the Holy Scriptures. God equips us for the vision he has for life here in our congregation. Each of us will be invited to respond with a financial commitment. Let's not think what we can do or what can we manage, but rather what will God call us to do? How can we show that we're alive and grateful and breathing? Let's rejoice because God is doing something through us and including us in his bringing life out of death. Just as Ezekiel did when he prophesied over the bones, just as we take a deep breath before doing something important, in the same way, after we've done that important thing, we exhale sharply. In just a few minutes, we'll be coming forward to submit a commitment to the vision God has given us. So once more, let's all take a deep breath together. And exhale. And now, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those uh, individuals who have already made commitments to the capital campaign and the vision for God that God has, us, has for our future. We pray for those who are making those commitments today, who are imagining what God has in store for the future of our Redeemer. We ask that you would bless their hearts and minds, that they may be able to listen to what you have called us to do. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, uh, we will have our commitment celebration. Uh, We will invite anyone to come forward to who is planning on making a commitment today uh, to bring those forward and place them in the basket at the front of the church. Uh, uh, While we do that, I believe Pastor Shane has prepared something to play.
overcome the sharpness of death. You open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our. <coughs> we therefore pray you to help your servants. Hold your be seated. At this time, we would now have our general offering. Please stand for prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness, and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, 
especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all who make and administer and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for all their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Especially remember Margaret, Marcia, Roger, Joanne, Caleb, Myrna, Janet, Lonnie, Bonnie, Kevin, Marie, and Ruth. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Especially remember those who suffer persecution in Iraq, Afghanistan, in Syria, and across the world who are meeting persecution uh, daily. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow, especially remember the family of Hope Podgornik. And grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We turn now to our bulletin. We have our colleagues for today. Father of life, just as you once breathed into our first parents with the breath of life, breathe again into us through the power of your word. We might be more fully transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord God, you have made us new. Bless the response we have made to that amazing reality today. Guide those who are still praying about what their commitment might be. Renew in all of us a trust in your promises to always provide for us. And may we see with our own eyes the vision you have for us. In the name of the one who has reconciled us to you, Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We pray the collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, a mighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And be seated for our closing hymn, number 895.
glorious things has done, <clears throat> world rejoices who from our mouth. gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this righteous God through all our life be given with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to Seated. There's been a lot of up and down, standing, sitting, standing, sitting today. I am doing my best to make sure that you don't have strokes. They say, <laughs> if you sit for too long of a period of time, it increases your chance of stroke. So I'm just doing my best to protect you during service. Um, we have a special celebration downstairs for our commitment Sunday, uh, general commitment Sunday for everyone in the church to make a commitment to the capital campaign. Uh, there will be a special brunch served after service today. We hi, uh, very much uh, encourage you to come and be part of that and enjoy in, in fellowship and in food. Uh, spend some time together as God's people. Um, we don't have Sunday school today because of the brunch, uh, but the kids who would attend 1030 service will be singing and putting their star banks on the tree at the 1030 service. Um, Okay, the first announcement there is for the, is for the brunch, which I already talked about. Don't forget Christmas caroling on December 7th, which is next week, uh, after service, or after uh, Sunday services at 1.30. We'll be going to the uh, uh, various nursing homes where our shut-ins are at and caroling at those places, as well as the Christmas services on the 14th of December at 3.30 p.m. There are other various announcements um, and things, I did forget one thing today in that uh, uh, Jeff Clausen has gone again uh, on a Most Ministries mission trip. Uh, and so if it would be okay, could we take a moment and just pray for their team and pray for their efforts down there? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have allowed uh, Jeff as well as many others to go on a Most Ministries uh, trip to offer glasses and and uh, medical help as well as the gospel to the people in those communities. We pray that you would bless them, keep them safe, and allow them to always have the words to speak and to allow them to uh, in some way breathe in that Holy Spirit uh, to other people. We ask that you would use them as tools in your hand to enact healing and to enact uh, regeneration in people's lives. Uh, use them and use them well, Lord. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Um, <clears throat> I have changed my day off to Mondays uh, because Fridays are not the greatest day for my day off. Uh, so just, just be aware of that. That means I'll be in the office on Fridays, but not, not there on Mondays, obviously. And your votes were tallied, and you chose, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You chose Lift High the Cross and Silent Night were the three choices for the Advent services. So we will be preaching on those, as well as the Advent series. You, there's some signs up on either, uh, either door here, 
you want to take a look on your way out sometime today. Um, we haven't done really much with the Ebola crisis and the things going on in Liberia. Uh, we do have such a close connection because so many of our folks from here have relatives, friends, family who are, who are sick, let alone who are affected by the Ebola outbreak. Um, we are going to do, uh, for the three Wednesdays, three separate drives. Uh, the first Wednesday will be for hand sanitizers. Apparently hand sanitizer, you know, the gel is very... Uh, is a very good thing to send right now. It's very helpful to them to get it. They're trying to, they're trying to get local people into a habit of always sanitizing their hands before they go in and out of the house or visit with people. Try to, it, that's a, one of the easiest ways to kind of curb the outbreak over there. So we'll be doing hand sanitizers the first Wednesday. Gloves, rubber gloves and surgical masks the second Wednesday is a, is a need they have there. And then the third Wednesday night, we'll be doing canned food items. Now, uh, don't go clearing out your cabinets because uh, apparently Liberians have some strange tastes in food. So I'll give you a more complete list about what kind of canned food items uh, you might want to think about uh, probably on Wednesday, um, such as, I guess, things like they like canned tuna, they like canned salmon, they like certain vegetables that are kind of unusual here. So. I don't know what they do with cream corn or things like that, right? Um, so I'll make sure to have, to have a list for you so you can know kind of what kind of canned food items would be the best to send to Liberia and Africa. Um, it is, I was thinking to myself as I was looking here, the, uh, the kids offering is especially humbling. Your two offerings today are especially humbling as well. Um, I think of that moment I used in the Old Testament lesson a couple weeks ago where uh, Moses had to tell the people to stop bringing their offerings because it was too much. Um, not that that's necessarily the case here, but um, I thank you for your willingness to go beyond and above what is expected, uh, especially in a time when not a lot is assured, and it's not as though we're in a great fiscal, financial time in our lives or in our country. Uh, thank you for helping and committing to the process, and uh, we'll, we'll pray for God's blessings on everything, included in the capital campaign as we go forward. Uh, God bless you as we continue his kingdom work in his kingdom field. <clears throat>